Good evening, everybody. The farm family story is always one of my very favorite ones to write every year. And I think that's because I get the privilege of telling the story of one of our farm families and letting everyone have an idea of what they do to help feed the world. We always look for a family each year that is committed to the soil and active in the community. And we certainly found one this year with the Paul and Edie Edwards Jr. family. Although Paul and Edie are no longer with us, we have their sons and family and grandchildren here with us tonight. We also got a picture of as many of the family members as we could get together, and that's going to go home with them as a reminder of this award this year. So would you please join me in welcoming three of their sons to the stage, Paul and Rick and Dave, and please join me in recognizing them for the honor of being the Farm Family of the Year for 2020. Um, we feel very honored tonight uh, to receive this award on behalf of our parents, Paul, and uh, who is a lot of people knew as Junior Edwards or Junie, as some of us really high school friends referred to him, and my mom, Ida. And looking back over the list of past recipients, uh, we feel very humbled and to be added to this list of great Quincy area farm families. The dairy farm is uh, located northwest of uh, Payson, between Payson and Quincy. Some of you may be familiar with uh, where the old haunted tavern used to sit on, uh, out there. And if you're traveling between Payson and Quincy on Route 96, after you go through a series of curves, it starts to straight out. And if you look southwest, there's three blue silos that sit on the horizon. And that's the family farm. It's referred to as High Blue Dairy. Uh, if you're traveling 336, uh, you go past the 96 intersection, you go through the bottoms to start up the hill. If you look back off to the left or the east, you can see the three silos and the buildings uh, from that direction as well. Uh, Greg and Dave own the family farm now. Uh, it was named High Blue, and uh, they continue to milk a herd of 110 to 120 Holsteins with about 60 replacement heifers on the 200 acres of that location. Um, please let me introduce you to some of the rest of the members of the family. Uh, Greg is up here. Uh, Jeanette is sitting where, if you would stand, as I. <laughs> uh, their son, Garrett, live at the dairy. Uh, Garrett couldn't be here tonight. He worked five straight nights at Blessing on the night shift. He worked seven to seven, and Greg says he's kind of pooped out. <laughs> but because of Garrett's training and working overnight, you know, he's used to staying up all night. And in the fall of uh, 2017, Greg calls me on a Friday uh, late afternoon and says, uh, you and Garrett want to finish shelling corn because the river was coming up, if you remember right. Uh, we had one of the highest fall rivers we ever did. I uh, said, so, well, yeah, I'll haul if Garrett a shell. So we started shelling about 6 o'clock in the evening and to get the corn out of the uh, field down there, and about 6 o'clock in the morning, we dumped the last load. And I think Garrett, it wasn't surprising that Garrett could run on night, but I think he shocked that his old Uncle Rick could uh, <laughs> hang with him that long. Remind me of all the nighters I used to have in college. Um, uh, see, uh, they also have a additional acreage in the farm and rent some additional acreage as well. Uh, David owns a farm, another farm near Fall Creek, near the Fall Creek Town Hall along Route 57, and there's where you keep a lot of replacements heifers are raised. Uh, my wife Mary is over here, and I uh, own a farm and live uh, just east of Marblehead. And we have a farm down in River Bottoms near um, the uh, Fall Creek Town Hall. The Snyder Drains District starts on the farm that Mary and I own and Andy owns part of, and then it goes for miles south. The problem with this, most of my farm ground is on the wrong side of the levee. <laughs> okay. Um, I also work in a point at TI Trust as a farm manager. I'm a state certified real estate appraiser, and I specialize in farmland. 
Uh, two of my daughters are here, uh, Olivia and her husband Corey, and then Aiden and Lila, my two grandkids, uh, who have known to ride in the combine with me and uh, on the tractor, and then my daughter Marissa. See Roseanne and her husband Bob are in the back at the bunny truck service table. Uh, they were the Ag Business of the Year. Their son, uh, we'll just hold all the applause so we can get through this a little quicker, I guess. Their son Ross is back here, uh, which would be Pawnee's grandson. He works in the business. Uh, they're at Bunny's Truck Service. Um, Amy and her husband Dave are over here. Stand up, please. Uh, their son, uh, Ben and Nick, are back at the bunny table causing mischief with Ross, as they've had for the last 30 years. Um, Nick, let's see, um, Nick farms. He uh, has about 20 beef cows, sells crop insurance, and he oversees about 7,500 head of hogs on a daily basis, or about 20, over 20-some thousand. So you can see... He's uh, heavily involved in the, in the business, too. I did say Nick, right? Yeah, thanks. OK. Um, Andrew and his wife are over here, and their sons, Elijah and, and uh, Jeremiah. Uh, Andy owns a farm next to the one I own down in the river bottoms below Marblehead. Uh, Andy works at the BASF plant. He was employed there when it was American Cyanamid 25 years ago. A huge agribusiness in our area. Uh, people don't realize the billions of dollars of product that roll out of that plant. Andy works in the engineering design department there. Um, as you can see, all of us have an interest in ag in the industry. Uh, a little bit of history. In 1955, Paul and and uh, my mom or my mom and dad returned to the farm to work with my grandparents, Paul Sr. and Selma. Uh, they uh, built the first milking parlor in 1957 along with a loafing shed uh, and hay shed. Uh, they started using artificial insemination early. Uh, if you saw the pictures here earlier, there was a picture of a white cow. Um, that was a cow that uh, the uh, dad and Greg and Dave uh, bred, and she was featured in a artificial insemination catalog that's probably seen around the world. My dad thought so much of that cow that when we were uh, at designing the tombstone after mom had passed and dad was still with us, he wanted that picture on the tombstone. <laughs> he was so proud of that cow. Um, in 1969, um, they conferred the free stalls uh, for, more cow for better cow comfort. 75, they purchased a farm from uh, grandma and grandpa. Uh, Dad continued to always adapt new technology. Uh, we used to milk with two in a parlor that held four cows, two on each side with two milkers. Um, in 78, wasn't it? 78, they converted it to six on a side using uh, 12 milkers and using uh, uh, an automatic takeoff unit. So they had to put the milkers on, prepare them to put the milkers on, but they automatically came off, which improved our efficiency. Uh, they also utilized uh, computerized feeders. Um, you want to feed cows according to the milk production, and they, each cow had a, a disc with a chip, in a, and that disc was about the size of a hockey puck. And the cows could go to any one of four stations, and it was programmed to feed that cow according to her milk production. And uh, so that was always continuing with Greg and Dave to adapt uh, new technology on the farm. Um, when us kids all were old enough, we all were 4-H. Uh, Dad and Mom always purchased, he purchased each one of us to register Holstein uh, calf. Uh, we showed at 4-H shows, the open show at the Adams County Fair. And um, the boys also, we, us boys also showed in the FFA show in our high school years. Uh, many awards were received in high school and college because of our dairy projects. We also gained we also have multi-generation dairy princesses in the family. Roseanne and Amy and my four daughters all were uh, dairy princesses and promoted milk. Key to the grandchildren continued to teach tradition of showing dairy cattle at the same shows. Eight members of the family have received a state FFA degree 
and two of the granddaughters have received the American FFA degree. Uh, the family, the Ewers family is a multi-generational family in Adams County, dating back to the 1860s when Paul and Mary settled in the North 12th Street area. And I didn't realize this until I got to doing research. Me and Mary are not the first Paul. My name is Paul Richard Edwards III. My wife's name is Mary. My great-great-grandfather who settled this area was also in mother were Paul and Mary. And we thought, we didn't discover that until just uh, here recently. Um, and as the race, generations have passed, the seventh and eighth generations are already riding in the tractor cabs and combines. Even after retiring and moving off the dairy farm, uh, mom and dad continued to be involved in the dairy. Mom kept the books, prepared new meals for everyone at the dairy. And if a few extra showed up, mom didn't know how to cook for less than 12 people. That's just the way it was. There was always plenty of food. Uh, dad continued to work with Greg and Dave. Uh, he mowed, raked hay, chopped silage, spread manure, did tillage work. Greg said that dad uh, did not concern him his, himself as much help, but that was always, but that was not always the case because that always meant that was that much less that Greg and Dave had to do. Dad was still chisel plowing during the fall before he passed. Um, and, and then that spring before, I farm on the side and I recruited Mary to drive the tractor. She was there for about an hour and Dad shows up and kicked her out. He, he kept on for about another six hours. <laughs> so he's always great help. Uh, over the years, the family has built uh, tile outlet terraces, dry dams, established, maintained grass walls, always control soil erosion. And in the 1970s, we planned a windbreak around the farm and Dad <coughs> made us boys promise we would never tear that windbreak <coughs> out. And if you saw a picture of the farmstead, part of that is still there yet today. The other part we got taken out in some windstorms. <clears throat> Paul and Edie received a 1985 Governor's Award for their soil and water conservation practices and stewardship of the land. Paul and Edie were ahead of their times when it comes to the importance of educating young children where their food come from, especially milk and dairy products. For almost 40 years, beginning in 1964, they hosted third graders from the Pace and Gray School at their farm. They came and spent the morning feeding calves, watching cows being milked in the milking parlor and learning about the dairy business. And what would a visit to a dairy farm be like without chocolate milk, cookies, and ice cream to finish out the morning? Paul and Edie were active in not only in the community but also in the church. Mom was a 4 H leader for many years. Uh, Mom was the uh, Quincy Harold Wig Farm Wife of the Year and recipient of the Payneville Lions Club Service Award. Paul and E were also honored to be the marshals of the Pace and Old Settler. <coughs> Mom and Dad instilled in us kids to be involved in our communities with the church and the agriculture industry. And doing so, each of us has served that in many capacities over the years. Greg was on the Prairie Farms Board and Soil Conservation Board. We've all worked at the church picnic and um, been very involved. Uh, we would like to say thank you to the Quincy Harold Wig and, uh, and Debbie Hussoff. And we feel very honored uh, to be honored tonight with this award. Thank you very much.